Hey everyone, welcome to 996 The Howl for the Uninitiated. This is an unedited YouTube vlog discussing everything Arizona Coyotes and in two weeks there's a lot happening in the NHL. You got the NHL draft, the NHL expansion draft with Seattle and then NHL free agency just a couple days after those drafts. So with the new coach that the Coyotes just hired, it's time to get down to business. And first, to get some things out of the way, they need to look at their restricted free agents and see which ones they need to keep. Luckily for the Coyotes, one really big name and then one sort of big name and then the rest, um, you know, just some holes to fill in the roster. Um, just depends on what direction the new coach and Bill Armstrong want to take the Coyotes ahead in. Uh, I'll get into that much later. But first, let's start with the big name, the big man, but the small man, Connor Garland, who has been, uh, his name's been flowing around in some mainstream hockey journalist articles. I believe there's some talk about him being ca uh, packaged with Oliver Ekman Larson to be traded to the Boston Bruins, but it's all speculation. Don't fret. Uh, his rights are still held by the Coyotes. He can't just go off like an unrestricted free agent and go sign somewhere willy-nilly. Uh, his rights are owned by the Coyotes. He's restricted. That's why he's a restricted free agent. So let's get into his numbers. Um, to be honest, I don't see a lot of people talking about this with Garland. And I really didn't realize this since in, until I was writing these numbers on the board. He's yet to play an 82-game season, not due to injury, but due to just unfortunate circumstances externally from the NHL. His first season in the NHL, he got called up about halfway through the season, maybe late December, I believe it was. And all he did was score goals in a time where the Coyotes were not scoring. And it was a big, it was a huge uh, impression he left on the Coyotes fan base. Pretty much exactly like what happened with Michael Bunting last season. He was the original Michael Bunting. We'll call it the Garland effect, just in case that happens quite a, quite often as years go on. So 13 goals, 5 assists, 18 points, and 47 games played. Pretty good for a guy who was in Tucson, was a late, ra a late round draft pick. Not much expected of Connor Garland. And so his next full season, which it should have been, was ended early due to the pandemic. He was our first 20 goal scorer in a really long time since uh, I believe it was Clayton Keller in his rookie season, perhaps. 22 goals, 17 assists, 39 points in 68 games played. A pretty good, pretty remarkable season Connor Garland had. Uh, even in the playoff bubble, he was good as well. But he really took a step forward this past season. He just looked like a completely different player, a, dyna a dynamic player, holding on to the puck, you know, jiving around the ice, uh, sharp, sharp turns with his skates. The opposing defenseman really couldn't handle Garland. And um, they, they were committing a lot of penalties against Connor Garland. And it seemed like Garland was having fun out there, but it kind of did slow down near the end of the season. He was, you know, he had a nagging injury that he took about, took a few games off. He played 49 games in that 56-game uh, season, so he missed seven games. 12 goals, 30, uh, 27 assists, 39 points. So the same point production, uh, just one season, had about 19 games less. Then the previous season, uh, all three seasons, he was on pace to score 20 or more goals, and he did score more than 20 goals in his second season, quotation marks, because they're not full 82-game seasons. He's looking for a contract. All Coyotes fans want him to stay. We do not want to see him get traded for high draft picks. If Bill Armstrong is absolutely handcuffed and has to make the trade, which I don't want, uh, it better be a first round draft pick and a high one at that. If, if you're looking at what contract Garland deserves, I think uh, if you look at comparables, I mean, he's not touching the Jake Gunsel contract. Jake Gunsel scored 40 goals and then got a six by six contract. So Connor Garland should not be anywhere near $6 million. On the low end, you're looking at a bridge deal like Manjapane in Calgary. 
where he got two and a half million dollars for two years. Uh, Kevin LeBanc looks like a good comparable. He has four point seven five million dollars for four years, and then maybe on a lower end, ahead of Manjapane would be Andreas Janssen and Kasperi Kapanen, where they got about three and a half million dollars by three years or four years. Andreas Janssen got the fourth year. Kapanen was three and a half by three years. So for me, I would never go higher than five million. I think everyone just wants Garland to get that five-year, $5 million contract just so he stays. But I think a fair contract would be like Kevin LeBanc, you know, high fours. So like 4.75 million, I could see that. For about four or five years, uh, I wouldn't really give him an eight-year contract just yet. Like I said, he hasn't played 82 games yet. Um, he, he's a great player. He's an energizer bunny. I love the way he plays. He's got more in him. I feel like he's going to progress further and further as seasons goes on. But you don't want to get caught with your pants down with a big contract like they, like they did with Clayton Keller or Oliver ekman Larson. You want a good value contract like what Chikrin has or Christian Dvorak has. Schmaltz too, that's a bit fair for both sides. Uh, I forget what Schmaltz gets. It, it may be $5 million. I believe Schmaltz gets $5 million around there. So I wouldn't go higher than 5 I wouldn't go lower than 4 So between 4 and 5 is good. And the number of years, I guess 4 or 5 years, would be good for that. So moving on from Garland is Aiden Hill. Another question mark in the coming weeks due to the expansion draft. The Coyotes can only protect one goaltender, which... It's either Hill or Kemper. And honestly, uh, it should be Kemper, but if you're looking to like rebuild or save money, maybe you just protect Aiden Hill because he's cheaper. He's got some pretty average, above average stats for a starter, and you can shave off Sally with Kemper. Maybe you sell high off Kemper, but it, it's pretty, I would assume they protect Kemper. It's kind of boneheaded, bo a boneheaded move uh, to try and maneuver around the expansion draft. We saw that last time with the Vegas Golden Knights where teams like Florida and Minnesota would try to play some 4D chess by protecting some players or trading away some players. You saw Florida lose Riley Smith and Jonathan March or so and protect some other guy who didn't end up being with the team anymore. And then uh, the Minnesota Wild lost Alex Tuck in exchange for someone else. So you never really want to think too much about the expansion draft. I believe they would protect Kemper. Um, Aiden Hill is looking for his first NHL contract. Some respectable numbers, um, especially uh, his second NHL season with the team where Darcy Kemper was injured. This was around the time they just got Taylor Hall. They played Ranta so much. I believe they played him about 32 games. Aiden Hill only played nine games, but look at these numbers. I mean, pretty sure they should have, gave, should have given Aiden Hill uh, more of the load when Kemper got injured. Pretty good save percentage, 0.918. Uh, okay, goals against average, 2.62. And then last season when Kemper and Ronta were rotating on injuries, it was the Aiden Hill show for about uh, 19 games. Uh, oh, an okay average save percentage, 0.913. Pretty high goals against average, 2.74. But you're playing like Colorado eight times, Vegas eight times, Minnesota eight times. So those numbers are a bit skewed more on the high side, but still pretty good for, you know, 91.3% against those high offense elite teams facing them eight times. Um, not too bad. Uh, for Aiden Hill, you're not looking for a huge contract. Uh, I'm pretty sure Aiden Hill, all he wants is a one-way contract. He wants an NHL-only contract, no more AHL. He's now an AHL backup. Maybe he gets $1 million by two years, maybe $1.5 million by two years. Nothing more than $2 million. Um, $1 million, one and a half is fair for Aiden Hill. Give him a bridge. See how he performs as a regular NHL backup. Uh, if he fails that bridge contract, you got Ivan Prozatov waiting in the wings. 
and you can finally move on from Aiden Hill because Aiden Hill's been he's been in limbo with Tucson and Arizona for a really long time now. So it's finally up to him. He, he'll get that NHL backup contract, and it's up to him to push for that starting role. Maybe as an excellent season next year. And when Kemper's an unrestricted free agent, maybe you just go with Aiden Hill. So he's still got a lot to play for. Uh, he could he could put some heat under Kemper's behind uh, next season. So we'll see what happens with Hill. Obviously, I would keep Hill. You got to sign him. Good backup, cheap, a fan favorite, uh, really familiar around the team. So I would stick with him. And then from then on, it's kind of just, you know, throwing a dart uh, on a dartboard. You have Lane Peterson, who made his NHL debut last season, three points in 15 games for Arizona. And then his previous two seasons with Tucson, he's about a point-per-game player. He wears the alternate Captain A on his jersey for the Roadrunners. To me, he's a replacement fourth-line center type of guy. I don't look at him as a third-line center. He's not highly offensive. He's more he's a responsible forward with some upside. I like the way he plays. Uh, I would like for the Coyotes to keep him, you know, minimum league contract for one or two years. I look at him like a Michael Chaput guy. I mean, I hope the Coyotes move on from Michael Chaput and like Frederick Gauthier and those sort of fringe NHL fourth line centers and promote P- uh, Peterson or Pedersen. To, to that fourth line center role. Bit of a younger guy, just give him give him the job. He's resp- he'll be more responsible. He has some speed and some legs to him. Um, maybe give him another shot and get him to learn about the NHL game a bit more. He's got familiarity with the system. He's been in Tucson for a long time. Uh, he emerged with Michael Bunting um, a bit, you know, three quarters away left into the season last year. So I'm not totally over Peterson yet. Uh, still want to see what he what he's capable of. Maybe he takes an extra step, you know, in the summer, trains really hard, comes back, and he's a great third line, fourth line center who could put the puck in the net. You know, that'd be great. I think his ceiling is a third line center. So if he does anything better than a fourth line replacement center, that's gravy for the Coyotes. And then you get into Dryden Hunt and John Hayden, who were pickups by Bill Armstrong last NHL free agency, where Bill Armstrong and Rick Tockett wanted to get gritty, cactus-like, intimidating players, which didn't really translate well. So I wonder if this offseason, Bill Armstrong and Andre Turini decide to go on a different path. Maybe they go for more speed and more upside rather than, you know, intimidation, gritty, like Rick Talkett players. Um, Dryden Hunt, he had a miserable second season with Florida, which is why they didn't sign him. And they got picked up by Arizona, who pocketed three goals, five assists, eight points. In 26 games played, he played mainly on a line with Phil Kessel, and Johan Larson, where we saw Phil Kessel reach 20 goals and just, you know, become Phil Kessel become that player that the Arizona Coyotes fans wanted all along when they acquired him from the Pittsburgh Penguins. So maybe I'm not saying Drayden Hunt is the reason for Phil Kessel's emergence and breakthrough and goal scoring, but it'd be it'd be much better if Phil Kessel had better line mates and you know players who could put the puck in the net or just play a, a better offensive tempo game than Dryden Hunt. I feel like the guys can move on from Hunt. He's replaceable. Uh, hopefully he finds another job with another team. And then John Hayden, not really going to point put points and assists for John Hayden. Uh, he did hit a lot, though. Looking at his career with Chicago, 1.79 hits per game. Then the New Jersey Devils just about two hits per game. And then with the Coyotes, averaging almost three hits per game, he was a big hitter. Rick Tockett just would not remove him from the lineup in the last 10 to 15 games. And it made me so mad, uh, pulling my hair out. Uh, I'm not sure why Rick Tockett insisted that John Hayden play every game. He was a black hole 
offensively. He did score like a goal or two near the end, which was funny. Uh, we saw Nick Schmaltz play with John Hayden. It was just a miserable end of the season overall. But this was like the straw that broke the camel's back for me. Uh, I wouldn't move on from Hayden. If you need an enforcer, if you need a guy who hits but only plays select few games, then re-sign Hayden at league minimum. Just keep him around. Maybe the players like him. Um, the, some good things he did, he would fight a lot. And it seemed like whenever he would fight, the team would win or rally behind the fight. So he does have, you know, that, you know, those fighting instincts that could rally a group, raise a morale on the bench. So if, you know, the coach and Bill Armstrong really want that type of person on their team, on their roster, then re-sign him. It's better than going off and getting Zach Ronaldo. Uh, but he's no Ryan Reeves, no Patrick Maroon type guy. So uh, if you need a cheap one of those guys, John Hayden's your best bet. So that's it. It's mainly just Connor Garland and Aiden Hill in terms of restricted free agents that the Coyotes need to focus on and re-sign and bolster the roster. Uh, these other guys... Peterson, I would like to keep as well, but Hunt and Hayden, um, those are pretty much afterthoughts, and they can focus on their unrestricted free agents and the expansion protection draft, a protection list. So, um, you know, just to start, I would, I would like to see Connor Garland and Aiden Hill signed immediately within this week or next week before we get into the draft where trade talks are so rampant and so many rumors floating around. I would love to get a, a Connor Garland deal done right away and so we could like ease our thoughts on that front. But that's it for me for now. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, spread the word. And thank you for your support.